Welcome to Corey Rawson High School Physics class. And today we're talking about energy in a pendulum. And energy in a simple harmonic oscillator. This is not what I want to talk about actually, but I do have to intro it. I found this today uh, when I had been thinking about something else for months and months and literally years. But I found in this book, the book we use, Holt book, 1999, I think. Uh, I don't have my glasses on, but I think it's Surway and Fawn are the authors. And on page 444, they give a figure for a pendulum swinging back and forth. And how on one end it's got potential energy, in the middle it's kinetic, on the other end it's potential energy, in the middle it's kinetic. Kinetic energy is high in the middle low on the ends, potential energy is high on the ends, low in the middle. And the total mechanical energy remains constant. So whatever it is here plus directly above that gives you the total. Here plus this gives you the total. The blue plus the green gives you the total. The total mechanical energy stays constant with no friction, of course. Now, if you had attached to a structure of some sort that wouldn't move, and it's sliding frictionless a mass back and forth, this would be pretty much what you would have, the same thing. But I wondered some years ago, when you're oscillating it like this, many years ago actually, when you're oscillating vertically, how do you keep track of the elastic potential energy? Oh, the difference is, by the way, in the potential energy horizontally, that potential would be in the form of elastic. If it's a swinging pe pendulum, that potential would be in the form of gravitational potential energy. Other than that, those, those graphs would be about the same. But what do you do when it's vertical? And you've got elastic potential energy, and gravitational potential energy, and kinetic energy. And I had thought, it's easy when you know the answer, but I had thought about that many times over many years and got confused and figured it out. And finally, about last fall, came to the conclusion I can graph all that and put it all together. I found this one today, but I graphed it. So I took and figured out I don't remember what my mass was I had or what my displacement was. It might have been like two kilograms. I guess you could figure it out from these numbers. I have a one kilogram mass, I guess, that is oscillating two meters, so it would be a longer spring than this. Okay, so oscillating zero to two meters. We're probably measured zero to two. I made gravity 10 meters per second squared just to make the math easy. I made Hooke's Law, the spring, uh, 10 newtons per meter. And then, so we were doing on this as a planet with slightly higher gravity than Earth. But when you do that, when you put it together and you get all these columns and you put them all in the right place and you figure all this out and you plot it all and you come up with the way for the, the, the graph to come up with the numbers, program it all in. The, this is a Google Sheets I made. Oh, a few months ago, you get this. And this is what's going on. So if you add at any point the kinetic energy, which is zero, you see kinetic energy is this yellow line, and the elastic potential energy is this red one, and the gravitational potential energy is this blue one, you always get the mechanical, the combination of the three. So zero plus zero plus 20 gives me that mechanical energy. If you come in here and I've got like five right here, and this is like, I don't know, four, and this is whatever this is, 11. Four and 11 is 15 and five is 20. So if you plot it all as it goes up and down, Your gravitational potential energy at the top, it's all mechanical, 20 joules. At the bottom, down at the ground, 
it's all elastic. In the middle, a lot of it's kinetic energy, but it's not as all kinetic energy as you would think. Uh, maybe the characteristics of the spring would change that. I hadn't really thought about that too much. But in the middle, if you think about it, right in the middle, half of it's GPE. Okay, and this and the and the spring somewhere between all the way down, all the way down, and all the way up, halfway, half of it's got to be gravitational potential because this is a linear function, mass times gravity times height. There's still some elastic potential energy in the spring based on one half kx squared, but since that's a square, it's, it's not that much of it. But then the, the kinetic energy is the remainder. And all of that added together is 20. And it looks like for my example, the numbers are 10, 5, and 5 is how that works out. So that was kind of an interesting little thing. I have not seen this written or published anywhere. I've tried to look something like this up. So maybe this is an original. It, which I like these kind of things because it turns out being pretty simple. But when you're trying to figure it out, it'll rot your brain. <laughs> it's hard to figure out. Uh, it's not so bad when you put numbers in and you just take your time and to put it all in a spreadsheet. The spreadsheet's what makes this possible. Uh, have a good day. This is in my Google Drive. If you want this shared with you, by the way, if you want me to send you that's the data on this, the Google Sheet, I can. Just contact me at uh, Blake at CoreyRawson.com. Dot org. I can even send you a PDF of this whole uh, flip chart, this active inspire flip chart.